So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to make a hovercraft using my Circular Gravity Force 3 package. Uh, Circular Gravity Force 3 can be purchased on the Unity Asset Store, and it's in the links and descriptions below if you guys want to check it out. Um, but we're going to go ahead and go into Prototypes under Scenes and click the empty scene here, and we're just going to set the car up here. And I'm just going to show you guys how easy it is to kind of set up a hovering, um, hovering craft here. Um, it's pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and go to Assets, Prefabs, 3D, Player, and we're going to go ahead and select this Hovercraft object here under the Prefabs, and there's two of them here. There's one with the CGF and then one without it. CGF is basically where it's all hooked up and ready to go, but um, we're going to go ahead and just select the Hovercraft, which is just a blank one. And then I'm going to go ahead and move it up here, and we're going to focus on it. And if I select my camera and focus on it, so uh, you can press Control shift f to focus on whatever you're looking at if you have your camera selected, which is a nice feature. Um, and we're going to go ahead and go to Tools, CGF3, Wizard. Oh, let's go ahead and play it here, and I'll show you guys. Um, we got Physics, and it's just Drops. So we have our wizard here, and what we want to do is we want to basically apply force upward to the car so that it's hovering. Um, and in order to do this, we're going to be also using um, uh, a trigger object here, which is um, create hover trigger. And um, I would highly suggest uh, if you guys haven't seen any other tutorials to go see like the car or a rocket um, tutorial before this one. This one's a little bit more advanced, but um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, so let's go ahead and select our type 3, um, 3D, and then also size. We'll just leave this all the same. We'll go to shape, raycast. Uh, force type, we're going to go ahead and select um, force, um, force mode, we're going to just do acceleration. Um, you guys can play with that and see which one you like better. I like acceleration because it's a little bit smoother for this hovering effect. And then we're going to go ahead and select create hover. And then we're going to go ahead and create. And you'll notice there's two different objects here. One is the CGF object which we just created and then uh, parented to that is this trigger hover uh, object. And what this trigger, trigger hover, uh, hover object does is it basically overrides the CGF force power to what it needs to be for the distance from the car to the ground. Um, and this is just, it's more of kind of a measuring tool and it basically overrides whatever the circular gravity force's power is based on um, whatever this hover distance is. And I'll show you a little bit more of how that's going to work. but. Um, we're going to want to go ahead and apply force upward to the car. Right now it's applying it to the right of it. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to select the CGF object and we're going to rotate it upward. So that way we're applying force up to the car so that it hovers. And then we're going to also kind of make it so that it's a little bit center. And you'll also notice that the, the child object now is looking directly downward and you can actually see that it's kind of measuring the distance. Basically it's all it does is measuring the distance here and figuring out what force needs to be applied to the CGF force power here. And it basically overrides that value based on uh, these values under the hover or the trigger hover object. So let's go ahead and select the CGF again here and we're gonna make sure that it's centered with the car so I'm gonna go ahead and kind of align this and make sure that uh, we're good to go and I'll put it forward so we're good forward now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna also select the trigger hover object here and this is something we want we want this to align directly in the center of the car so basically it figures out um, from the center of the car to the ground this is the distance and based on that distance it applies the the appropriate uh, force power to here and um, the strength of that power is under the uh, trigger hover and we can set this to whatever we want to I'm gonna go ahead and set this to 50 and then we're gonna make it so that the hover distance um, is so that means how high you want it to hover and we want it to go ahead and hover maybe at like 3.5 and max distance so max distance is how far it gets recognized. So if I go ahead and set this to like 2 um, and then I'm going to go ahead out of 3D mode here. You can see the white line a little bit. Maybe I'll set it to 3 so you can see it a little better. You can see there's it's trying to actually get a distance here um, but let's set it to 5 and it actually touches the ground. So that's it's it's kind of the way of should I apply hovering based on uh, on this distance. Um, so let's go ahead and play and we should see it hovering. So if I go ahead 
Oh, and then one other thing. We want to go ahead and parent this CGF with the hover car frame. So that means that once, if the car is moving around, we want to make sure that our, our applied um, force is sticking with the car too. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and set this, the CGF to like three. We don't really need it that big. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and drag it under the frame of the car. And I'm going to move my camera. Oh, our camera's fine. So we'll hit play. And you'll see we get a hover effect. And it's kind of bouncy right now. Um, and to fix that, we want to go ahead and select our hover frame. And then we also want to set the drag dis or the drag to one, and then maybe the angle um, drag to five. That way we get more of a smooth, smooth hovering. Yep. So we got it hovering now. So now what we want to do? Oh, one other thing too is we want to make it so that our hover frame um, doesn't go like this, or go like this, or go like this. We want to basically lock those rotations on our object. And to do this, we go ahead and just select the frame, and then we want to go ahead and lock the X and Z rotation. And basically, it's going to just allow us to rotate this way, um, but not rotate that way, and so on. Um, so now what we want to do is we want to apply force forward and backward based on like me pressing forward and backward. So let's go ahead, and I'm going to go ahead and face the the camera this way so that we can kind of see it moving backward and forward but I'm gonna go ahead and select our car and focus on it and we're gonna go ahead and bring up our CGF window um, you can actually uh, press control shift W which brings up the the window here or you can just go to tools and click on the wizard there okay so we want to go ahead and create so leave kind of some of the types and size power and all that stuff the same we can change that later um, we're going to go ahead and select Raycast, and we're going to go ahead and apply Force. And the Force mode, we're going to leave it at Force. And we want to apply a Axis Controller to this. That way, we want to basically apply the uh, Vertical Axis Controller to this, so that way if we press forward and backward, it moves forward and backward. So let's create it. And you'll notice our object is pointing to the, to the right again, or the left. And we're going to go ahead and rotate it so that um, the force is being applied to forward and backward. So we just want it like that. And we want it centered with the car. Um, and I think that's good. So let's go ahead and maybe hit the size to six. And we also want to parent this with the hover hovercraft. Um, we also want to maybe change the name of this so that we know that because we're going to have multiple CGFs in, in our car, so we want to kind of maybe name it so that we don't get confused. So hover engine, and we'll call this one thrust. And we'll drag it into our frame, so that way it doesn't move around. And we're going to go ahead and so we, when we click when we click that uh, create access controller, it basically added this other component, which overrides another. This basically overrides the the force power, just kind of like the uh, the hover or the trigger hover. But in this case, we want to basically just override it so that when we press forward and backward, it changes the values. So we're going to go under and there's three different things you can change here. You can change you can in enable um, the circular gravity force to be on or off or the force power or the size of it, but we want to go ahead and just change the force um, power to it. So idle value, we want it to be zero. That means when we're not pressing anything, it's the power is just zero. Um, but so we want to make one controller here and we want to type in vertical for vertical or the vertical axis. And we want the press value to be, um, how much do we want to move forward and backward? Let's uh, put it to 10. Um, so now you'll see um, when we press forward and backward, um, it applies 10 when you press forward and negative 10 when you press backwards. So if I press forward, moves forward, press backward, moves backward. There, so we got it moving forward and backward. You can also pre hit the gizmo here and kind of see things getting applied. Um, so you can actually you can actually see that, so this force power gets overridden. You can kind of see the values of it changing. Um, and if I don't press anything, it turns it to zero. And basically, this is what that component does. Is it just overrides um, the force power based on the axis controllers. So now we want to make it turn. 
Um, and we want to basically do the same thing that we did with this one, except apply torque so that it spins around. So we're going to go ahead and select our hover car again, focus on it, uh, bring up our window, and we're going to go ahead and under shape, raycast, force type, um, we're going to want to apply a torque this time rather than force. And we're going to leave the max angular velocity at 10. And then for force mode, just leave it at force. And let's see here, we want to make another axis controller along with this. So let's create it. Okay, so you notice now um, we made this other object. And right now, the positive means that it's spinning downwards. So you can kind of see that it's the way that this is set up now, it's, it would be spinning this way and we don't really want that right now. We want to make it so that it kind of spins um, kind of like this if it's positive and then this way if it's negative. Um, so we're going to go ahead and select that CGF object we made. Um, let's just say, let's just call this like torque. So that way we know. And then let's go ahead and apply it to the frame of the car. And we're going to go ahead and move this over this way. And then I'm going to rotate it like that. And so you'll notice it's pointing straight downward. That means it would roll the car. And we don't really want that. We want to make it so that it's doing this. So we want it 90. And it's not really too even. So let's move it over like that. OK. That's what we want. So now you'll see that it's going this way. So under force, um, we want to go. It's kind of the same thing that we set up how or how we set up the forward and backward. We just want to set it up so that's horizontal. So if I go ahead, we want the idle value to be zero. So when, when we're not pressing anything, it doesn't do anything. And we want to set up a controller. And we're going to type in horizontal here. And we want the force power to be four. Um, we don't really. Um, it, we don't need too much force to actually make this thing turn left and right. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Um, and you'll also notice that this arrow positive, it's going to be turning this way. And if I actually change the value here, you can actually see it. Um, if it's negative, then it rotates the other way. So let's go ahead and change it to 10. Hit play. If I start moving around here, you'll see that it's moving. Yep. That's pretty much, pretty much it. And you can kind of play with the values and get different effects here. Another note too, and this is kind of cool. Let's say um, you're not constricted to the floor. And I'll kind of show you what I mean by this. Um, let's say we move this thing up here and I angle it in such a way maybe kind of up like this. And let's go ahead and maybe and change our camera so that it's looking this way. And I'm going to go ahead and select the hover engine here. And I'm just going to flip it around so that it's the opposite way. Yeah, I like that. And let's make the hover distance um, this would be an example of making the hover distance actually longer so that it actually hooks up. We're going to get kind of a Spider-Man effect here. So I'll just set this to 15. Uh, but if I set it to 5, you can actually see it's not even reaching the ceiling here. Or 4. Yeah, so it's not reaching the ceiling. But if I kind of set it here or get it higher than that, then it um, reaches that distance. Um, so let's go ahead and face the camera this way and hit play. So now you notice I'm actually hovering out the ceiling, which a lot of people kind of think that hovering off the ground, you know, but actually if you direct it in any direction that you want to, you can hover it any way that you want. I mean, you don't have to do it from the ceiling. I mean, from the ground, you can do it from the ceiling if you want to. And it's, it's kind of trippy. <laughs> so if I kind of fall off here, it's going to fall and then I lose control of my ship. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of cool. Like you can actually think about hovering stuff almost in you can hover off of anything. It's almost kind of like a Spider-Man effect. Um, like I could even make it, let's do maybe one more here. Oh yeah, let's get really crazy. Let's make it so that we're kind of like that. And then I also want to make it so that this um, hover trigger 
Uh, we're just going to set it like really crazy high, like 50. So that way it's going to link up to that other one. And I'm going to go ahead and move my camera. Hit play. So if I move over, it's like boing. So I'm basically just kind of hovering off the ceiling, which is you can get some pretty cool game ideas here. And then I'm and then I'm stuck. Anyway, well that's um, showing off how to um, do the hovering hovercraft um, tutorial. Um, if you want to check out more stuff, um, check the links in the descriptions below. But other than that, you guys have a good one.